So you probably went into this video going, what the heck is an Enneagram? If you've taken personality tests before, you might have heard of the Myers-Briggs one, aka the one with the four letters. Myers-Briggs is focused on cognitive processes, while the Enneagram is focused more on our core fears and desires, which I found more interesting recently. There are nine Enneagram types, and while there are a lot of complex stuff around it, in this video, I'm just going to briefly explain the nine basic types and use visual novel characters to demonstrate them. First, we'll start off with type one, the reformer. Their basic fear is being corrupt, evil, or defective. Their core desire is to have integrity, good morals, and general balance. You may know some of them as perfectionists, making sure they're always doing the right thing, and many times making sure everyone else is too. The first visual novel character I'll use to show off a type one is Komomo Hisaki from Hoshizora no Memoria. She's kind of like a hall monitor, constantly trying to get the astro circle closed because of them not following the rules, among other reasons. She's very strict about things like that, to the point where the leader of the astro club Asaho calls her a tyrant constantly. The next type 1 visual novel character I'll use is Mea Mitsurugi from the Muv Love series. Her type 1 is more about her own personal morals. While Mea's pretty polite and extra, in Unlimited and Alternative, Mea becomes very adamant about adhering to the law about people's livelihoods and human divinity, and occasionally gets into arguments about Takaru about her moral code. She's also very duty-bound in general, self-sacrificing herself for the cause very often. The last type 1 visual novel character I'll use is Ichijo Ayane from from Full Metal Demon Muramasa. Ichijo is very much a type 1 taken to the extreme, being very idealistic about justice, saving the weak, and destroying people who prey on the weak. Type 1s are considered an anger type, and considering how pissed off Ichijo gets a lot of the time about perceived injustices and acting on them, I can't think of a perfect one representation than her. Next off, I'll talk about Type 2, the Helper. Their core fear is feeling unwanted or unloved. Their core desire is to feel loved. Type 2s are a worth type that base their worth on their relationships with other people. They can often be seen as pleasers, actively doing what they can for others, often prioritizing those other people's wants over their own. The first visual novel character I'll use to show off Type 2 is Mayu Shikibe from Riddle Joker. As you can see in the CG, she very much likes for the main character to feel comfortable with her, and doing her best to play the Onesan or caring big sister type of character in general. Whenever she's around the group, she always tries to be helpful to the main character or the other major characters whenever she can. Part of the reason why she's purposely held herself back in school is for the sake of another character. Next, I'll talk about Ushio Asuka from Marshmallow all the way home. Similar to Mayu, she very much tries to be an Onesan or big sister type character, but she's a little on the small side so it can be hard for her at times. That said, she's very much a caring person to everyone who works for Marshmallow Tree, always making sure they look their best, and since she's the shop's main chef, always doing her 100% best for her best friend Canon, the owner of the shop. Lastly, I'll talk about Mashiro Toba from Root Double. She's basically a stand-in for every daddy daddy childhood friend heroine, always doing what she can to cook for the protagonist every morning, and basically acting like his wife. She definitely emphasizes the situation of her liking to help other people with their problems, but sucks at talking about her own. She gets bonus points in that Root Double actually created the nine main characters based on the Enneagram, and they clearly wrote her as the Type 2 archetype. Next off, I'll talk about Type 3, the Achiever. Their core fear is feeling worthless, and their core desire is feeling valuable and worthwhile. Type 3 is another worth type, this time where they feel like their worth is dependent on success, results, and or validation from other people. They could be achievers or people who do their best to make sure their outer image is the absolute best it can be. The first visual novel character I'll bring up is Rin Tosaka from Fate Stay Night. Right from the beginning, she already has an excellent image in terms of being an honor student, talented in magic, and a drive to win the Holy Grail War. She'll do what it takes to win, including attempting to summon the strongest servant, albeit she fails at that. Her attempt at hiding her strong values to doing what she can to win the war makes her seem a bit colder than she actually is. Next, we have Michiru Matsushima from The Fruit of Grisaya. Unlike Rin, she's the opposite of an achiever. In fact, she's kind of stupid. That said, with how hard she heavily practices her tsundere act is for the purpose of being an attention whore, or her way of upping her image for validation in an odd way. Without going into too many spoilers, part of why she acts the way she does is due to the exact three core fear, uselessness, and it's brought up how and why in heavy detail in her route. Next, we have Erika Furudo from Umineko. She's one of the most three villains I can think of, making absolutely sure to let all of her opponents know how much smarter and better she is than them. She'll do what it takes to win the logic arguments, 
even if she has to use duct tape to do it. On a minor note, I do think part of why she acts the way she does is due to her being a piece of Brinkastel and wanting the validation of her master. Next off, I'll talk about Type 4, the Individualist. Their core fear is not having an identity or significance. Their core desire is to find themselves and their own identity. Type 4s are all about being authentic and expressing their true selves. That means they can be emotionally honest, creative, and personal, but could potentially be moody and self-conscious. The first visual novel character I'll bring up is Hanako Ikazawa from Kadawa Show. While she is very quiet and reclusive at first, you slowly get to her true self, especially in her route. Without getting into too many spoilers, in her route, part of the conflict is that Hanako notices that the main character, Hisao, is kind of treating her in a way based on his perception of her and her situation and not how she really feels. Next up, I'll bring Mikazuki Hanai from Musicus. She's definitely a very strange person with some odd outbursts and can be kind of cynical about life and herself. But at the same time, she's very much openly self-reflective about thoughts like this with the main character from time to time and is generally a very openly honest person. Next up, I'll bring up Gundam Tanaka from Danganronpa 2. He is kind of a silly person who hams up his chuny persona, which includes him pretending like he's a supervillain with some hidden dark powers. However, the fact that he's so willing to be open to express what he really wants to be, as well as some of his actions that he takes in the game, even the serious ones, shows how much he's an emotionally authentic Type 4. Next off, I'll talk about Type 5. The investigator. Their core fear is being helpless or incapable. Their core desire is being capable and competent. A common thing with fives is that they're very good at being able to privately learn some kind of skill and be excellent at it or learn enough about something to be a true expert. However, this may come at the expense of some social skills or just generally them not sharing their knowledge properly with other people. The first visual novel character I'll bring up is Haru Usami from Jisen Jo no Mao. As you can tell from the CG, she uh, has a pretty messy appearance. She can also be a socially awkward weirdo during slice of life scenes, but during the more serious scenes, you can see how she's very proficient both in terms of physical prowess, battle of wits, and quick thinking. She's always willing to learn new information about her goal to single-mindedly take down the main villain, Mao. Next up, I'll bring up Phi from the Zero Escape series. She's very much a snarky, analytical girl who's good at hiding her emotions. She's very blunt, to the point, just stating things as they are, trying to get to the bottom of things. She even randomly knows a lot about quantum theory and game theory. Lastly, I'll bring up Kurisu Makase from Stein's Gate. Kurisu is definitely a more socially adjusted girl compared to the other two I've mentioned. She was able to get to where she was due to how much she loved studying physics and other science related stuff. And she's definitely the most knowledgeable on time machine mechanics and clearly very much enjoyed learning all that stuff. That said, she still didn't really have many friends until the main cast accepted her in the group. It's likely because she spent so much time studying her ass off in science. Next off, I'll talk about Type 6, the Loyalist. Their core fear is being without support or guidance. Their core desire is to have security and support. True to their title, Type 6 is tend to be quite loyal. They like to be reliable problem solvers and like it when the people they care about are supportive of what they do. However, they can also be quite skeptical and suspicious, consistently considering potential bad or worst case scenarios, kind of like playing the devil's advocate. Doing this too much may cause them to be overly anxious or indecisive. The first character I'll bring up as a Type 6 is the title character of the Phoenix Wright series. While he starts off a bit bumbling and lucky, he eventually becomes quite the respected attorney over time. Part of this is his absolute loyalty to all his clients. For the most part, when he picks up one, he's downright ready to defend them to the death, heavily believing in their innocence and doing what he can to get that not guilty verdict, though with an emphasis on finding the truth. Similarly, his investigating and court style involve being suspicious of every little thing and causing turnabouts by making the judge consider another potential, if odd, point of view. Next, I'll talk about Mashiro Arisaka from Aokana. While Phoenix was loyal to his clients and law office, Mashiro starts off showing her loyalty to her beloved Misaki Senpai. Whenever she notices Misaki getting kinda close with the main character Masaya, she starts to half-jokingly lash out at him, telling him to stay away from Misaki. When you get into her route, you get to see the reason why she's so attached and anxious related to Misaki. Thankfully, in her route, she does start to forge more healthy bonds, like with Rika who teaches her about flying circus. Ironically enough, she gets arguably more loyal to Masaya once the romance gets going, but she definitely still has that attachment to Misaki and does some nice things to give back to her relationship with her. Lastly, I have Natsuki from Doki Doki Literature Club. She might not seem like a 6 at first due to her kinda abrasive tsundere attitude, but when you get to know her,
her. Ultimately, she just wants to be around a group of friends that actually accepts her love of manga and such. When she suspects that people in the literature club might not actually accept manga as real literature is when she really lashes out to people, for example. More of that related to her core issues are covered in the DDLC plus side stories. Next off, I'll talk about Type 7, The Enthusiast. Their core fear is being deprived and in pain, and their core desire is to be satisfied and content or to have their needs fulfilled. The best way to describe them is that they're a very energetic type of person, always looking to get new experiences and like to see the positive in almost everything they do. They like their freedom and may be the type to be impulsive and potentially easily distracted when trying to focus on one thing. The first visual novel Type 7 character I'll talk about is Cap, or Shoichi Kazuma from Majikoi. He's essentially an exaggeration of Type 7 stereotypes, being a very positive, energetic guy who's constantly on the lookout for fun, new experiences. One minute he'll be talking with his friends, then he suddenly gets a new idea, and then he'll literally zoom on out of there. One notable thing is his ability to bring up the energy that Sevens like to do, and when Cap isn't around, there's a higher chance the friend group tends to have more conflict. Next, I'll talk about Lena Lichnauer from Senren Banka. Lena is very much a constantly cheerful and energetic, friendly girl. Even when there's hardships that happen in the plot whenever she's involved, she always pushes through with a smile on her face. Part of why she even moves to Japan to begin with is because she's essentially a weeb constantly wanting to get to know Japanese culture and fixing her misunderstandings on it. One underrated thing about her character besides her excellent humor is how her energetic positivity is a big factor of solving the big conflict that happens in her route. Lastly, I'll talk about Mashiro Tsukino from Making Lovers. She's certainly uh, one of the weirdest characters in this whole video but she definitely still has that energetic, cheerful, seven energy. She shows off a lot of it through her constant jokester attitude. She almost can't go five to ten minutes without making some weird pun, observation, savage remark, or some kind of humorous statement. Her route in Making Lovers is one of the more chill ones because of the different way she just tries to make her relationship with the main character, Cosma, more fun. Next off, I'll talk about Type 8, the Challenger. Their core fear is being harmed or controlled by others. Their core desire is to protect themselves or be in control of their own life and destiny. Type 8s tend to be self-confident and assertive, but also feel like they need to control their environment and people, which may make them confrontational and intimidating. That said, they also can be quite protective of the people closest to them. The first visual novel Type 8 character I'll bring up is Riho Kaguya from Deer Drops. If we're talking characters that radiate the full, confident, assertive, yet confrontational and intimidating energy, Riho tends to be one of the first visual novel characters I think of. She is not afraid to bluntly say what she thinks, and is willing to say and do a lot to reach her goals related to being part of a good band and music in general. Next, I'll talk about Kyo Fujibayashi from Clonad. She definitely leaves a very loud and aggressive first impression, whether it's almost hitting Tomoya with a scooter, or throwing a book at Tomoya or Sunohara whenever she gets mad at them. She is still a friendly and outgoing person, but she's just not afraid to talk and act in a very aggressive way, even to help people. She represents the protective side of Type 8 as well, being very protective of her pet, Botan, and her sister, Ryo. In Kotomi's route, this extends to Kyo helping Kotomi as well, even savagely getting people to listen to Kotomi's violin performances. Lastly, I'll talk about Sora Minazuki from Baldur's Sky. Similar to Kyo, she's very much an aggressive go-getter girl who's quite protective of her sister. In fact, her introduction to the main group is due to her thinking the main character, Ko, did something bad to her sister and get quite angry and physically aggressive towards him, though thankfully she does apologize when she realizes the misunderstanding. When she wants to do something, she is definitely the type to just do it and possibly drag people along that she feels she needs to. The final Enneagram type is Type 9, the Peacemaker. Their core fear is loss and separation, and their core desire is to have inner stability or peace of mind. Type 9s tend to by far be the most easygoing people. They're also usually open-minded minded and capable of getting along with just about anybody. They are very adamant about avoiding conflict, which may cause them to be pushovers to other people. They also may become complacent, sticking to a comfort zone or routine, as new things may be scary. The first visual novel type 9 character I'll talk about is Shizuru Nakatsu from Rewrite. She's easily one of the friendliest characters in the whole visual novel, and one of the most overtly accepting of Kotaro, who gets mixed feelings from just about everyone else in the VN. She very much has her own routine and comfort zones, especially with her eating her favorite food, Saori or packed mackerel in the same spot in the school by herself every day. Shizuru is a very quiet person and tends to not speak up much even during conflict, which causes a big issue in her route. Next, I'll talk about Kanako Shigure from If My Heart Had Wings. She's a relaxed and easygoing type of girl, getting along with and even teasing people from both the glider club as well as Akari, the student council enforcer. She is a bit on the quirky side, casually wearing her underwear when it's hot inside even though she's around other people, and not even really caring when a male is in the dorm. Unlike most 
most characters, Kanako never openly takes part of the conflicts related to the gliders, preferring to stay out of people's business. That said, she does take on the Type 9 role title, the Peacemaker, pretty well at times, especially when the Kazuto twins are fighting. She's the type that pacifies fights by trying to understand both points of view. Lastly, I'd say your average Moe gay protagonist tends to be a Type 9. They're easygoing, accepting of most people, and do their best to not stick out too much. However, they can be a little passive and purposely on the shallow side, likely to make it easier for the reader to self-insert. Thankfully, the better Moe gay protagonists do tend to take action when needed. Also, them being easygoing and accepting of others does make it a big plus and how they tend to have a wide variety of potential love interests, personality-wise, means their personalities can fit in with others easier. And there you have it, all nine Enneagram types represented with some visual novel characters. I avoided some of the more complex stuff about Enneagram like wings, tri-types, subtypes, and integrations to keep things beginner friendly. I haven't mentioned it yet, but I go to a site called Personality Database where you can type both real people and fictional characters for fun, which is where I got this video idea. Based on this video, what type do you think you are? I'm personally a 9. I definitely relate to the whole easygoing, seeing all points of view, conflict avoiding stuff. Anyway, I'm sure this is many people's first time even knowing what the Enneagram is, so feel free to hit me up with any questions or opinions on this type of video below.